How's it, how's it guys? I need your help today because one of these three books that I have here from Hiroshi Sugimoto, Chris McCaw, and Hal Eastman is worth 1,600 pounds. Now, one of them is also worth maybe 10 pounds. So what is it about photo books, monographs, that makes them, in certain cases, so wildly expensive? This is what we're going to be exploring today, is what is it about a certain photographer's work that makes them command such premium prices, I think is fair to say, about their monographs. Now, obviously, a photograph or a monograph is only worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. So the reason that I've chosen these three photographers today, not least because well, obviously one of these books is worth a fair amount of money, allegedly, that is all three of the photographers are, I won't say they're similar in style. They have a similar approach in so much that they're sort of interested in shape and form rather than physical things. You know, they're not doing portraits of famous celebrities or, or, or that sort of nature. So it's more about the photography rather than the subject itself. Also, all three of them within the broader circles of photography and out in the wider world are not necessarily well known. So we're not talking about Avedon's and Leibovitz's and, and Ansel Adams's, you know, names that might be familiar to somebody outside of photography. So the first photographer we're going to look at today is Hiroshi Sugimoto. And this book that I have here is a collection of his various works throughout his career. And his photography is, I think it's fair to say, you know, quite arty. It's not to everybody's taste, but most photography is not to everyone's taste. And it runs through his, his work that he's done with, with museums, with dioramas, with waxworks, through to the long exposures that he's creating with, with drive-ins where the movie is projected and he just takes a, a, an hour long exposure or two hour long exposure. And you end up with these very interesting experiments in light. And throughout all of his photography, I find that there is a very strong sense of, of quiet, of still, that I find quite intriguing, which I think is what drew me in to his photography in the first place, rather than any sort of technical aspects. Sugimoto's photography has gone across many sort of different, I suppose genres you could call it if you wanted to. So this is the kind of work that you're most likely familiar, if you are familiar at all with Sugimoto's photography, these kind of, these long exposures, these in the seascapes are his most famous works. So what's happening here is he's taking a very long exposure and letting the film play, the actual film, the movie film, play on the screen as this exposure is taking place. You end up with this, this bright, burnt out, you know, sort of patch of white. And of course, we may look at that and go, well, there's just a patch of white. There's nothing, nothing there. Why would that be interesting? And he would, of course, say, well, that's, the, that's all of the movie seen in a fraction of a second. I think this is kind of why you find his photography can be, you know, a little bit challenging, a little bit full on, because it's nice. I, I like his photography and I hesitate to word, use the word nice, but it is interesting and, and I do like the look of it. But unfortunately, it's wrapped up with a lot of arty farty brouhaha meaning, which I don't think necessarily adds anything to the photography. The seascapes that he creates are, I, I find lovely. I find them very tranquil. I find them very peaceful. I enjoy looking at them. They are certainly nothing technically exciting, but they just have a, a feeling of calm, a feeling of calm that I find is, is quite often lacking in photography. Sugimoto's architectural photography isn't really getting into the realms of long exposures and what have you, but more what Sugimoto calls infinite focus, which I suppose is again, is a bit of art nonsense saying out of focusness, <laughs> which is which is a whole another discussion thing. And if you are familiar with infinite focus, please do enlighten us in the comments below. Now, I do like the this approach to his architectural photography. Granted, again, it's very different to someone like Ezra Stoller, who's who's more about the actual form and the feature, whereas Sugimoto is kind of breaking it down into, into nothingnesses and just letting us kind of fill in or, you know, sharpen up the image, if you will. Once again, he sort of dips into this realm of taking photographs of waxworks and, and, and saying that they are art, you know, that these photographs are 
you know, somehow important and special and, and, and what have you. And, and I'm going to be completely honest here. I think this is why. What is, I, do, I do not get this. I don't see why anybody would think this is good. It's, it isn't any different to something that, you know, a, a student, a student could take. And again, let me know in the comments what you think about these. I don't like them. I'm going to be honest. It's okay to say if you don't like any or certain photography. I'm going to finish looking at his book with these, again, long exposures of candles that have been left to, to burn down their entire length of, of the stem of the candle. And, and I, I, you know, I, I much more prefer this than the work with the waxworks and the, the, the dioramas. I think this is more exciting. It's more interesting about what happens throughout photography. Or certainly what happens throughout Sugimoto's photography and how he sees the world. The second photographer is a gentleman called Chris McCall and this particular book called Sunburn, which is all about very, very long exposures where the sun has physically burnt a hole in the negative. This is, you know, this is, I think that's going to an extreme. And, and I first came across Chris's photography through another channel where I was watching it. And I was intrigued by this process because it's, it is something that I'd never ever considered before. And I, I very much like when I, I come across photography that doesn't have a, a, an obvious approach, that there's something different. It's like the first time that I saw sort of toy photographer, Holger photography, and, and obviously that's been sort of done to death, but Chris is doing something that requires a dedication, requires a patience, and requires an understanding about how the actual nuts and bolts of photography work. Because you can't just sort of set up a camera and say, well, I'm going to do a long exposure and, and have done with it. You know, this is obviously the, the work of many hours of experimentation. So this book is Chris McCall's Sunburn. And what's happening with these photographs is that he is using a plate camera and creating, again, like Sugimoto, an or extraordinarily long exposure. And what's happening is that the sun, this is the sun coming across, this is not a moon, and the sun is actually burning a hole, a physical hole, in the negative. And that's what, as I mentioned earlier, drew me to these photographs. The first time I saw it, I was like, wow, that is, that's outstanding, because not only have we got that physical presence of the sun, the sun burning into the negative itself, it is also dealing with all the issues, all the problems that you would get from having a long exposure. So these kind of this odd solarization, so sabatier, is it sabatier effect going on on the edges where there's the sun, because of this massively long exposure, is physically changing the film. And I, and I keep coming back to this idea of, of physically changing it. And that's, of course, what is going on in these, these images is that the sun, boom, 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 is punching holes, punching holes into the film, making its presence known. And there is something about these photographs that I find completely otherworldly. Whereas I find Sugimoto's images calm, I find them relaxing, I find these photographs absolutely like they is some sort of alien world. Because it is, well, it's quite recognizably ours, but look at these two prints. Look at these, these, these plates. They, they look like they come from somewhere else. They look like they inhabit a world that is not ours. And I love this about his photography. And I would absolutely want to have some of these up on the wall, whereas I don't think I would want to have Sugimoto's images up on the wall. I mean, look at this. Look at this print here. I just, it, it, uh, I can't actually describe how much it affects me. There's, there are sometimes I lack the vocabulary to say how much a photograph is like just wow. That's, and, and some, does it actually need anything more than that? I don't know if this is gonna get quite across the, um, the frame here, unfortunately, but this, as you can sort of see, is a, is a, is a massive, like long, sort of time-lapse image. I don't know quite how he's done this, but that's, of course, the beauty of these things is that we don't know. Well, I don't really know. If you know, please let me know. But I, I love this. It's, it's, it's a dedication, I think, is probably what I, I'm really getting from this, is that he spent the time to do this. Because obviously this is not just, I'm going to go out and take some pictures, I'll be back in half an hour kind of vibe. This is, this is somebody who is dedicated to creating something. 
So the third photographer that we're looking at is Hal Eastman and his book Dance. And this book is all about movement and shape. And, and, and again, long exposures. There's, there seems to be a theme going through. Maybe that's the key. If you want to have a book that's worth a lot of money and, and create monographs that people fall over themselves to buy, then just do long exposures. <laughs> you know, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, Hal does a great thing where he is just kind of using these long exposures within natural settings, within the forest, within, you know, anywhere that there's lots of lines going on, and then introducing the dancing shape into that. And, and in some respects, this reminds me of photography from, you know, when I was kind of younger, so like the 1970s, where, where things like this were quite fashionable, if you want to say that, that, that long exposures with lots of motion within them had a, a kind of, that was, as, as, that's what arty was. I don't know where that, that sort of feeling comes from. And, and obviously that's just a, a personal view. So the photographs in this book are accompanied by text and put together in such a way that we are, I, I think we're trying to create some sort of juxtaposition, take some sort of meaning combining all of the three. Whereas the photographs in the previous two monographs are more standalone. They're more kind of make a judgment about what this image is saying. And, and I quite like the fact that these, these shutter speeds are not as long as Sugimoto's or, or Chris McCaw's. So you have more of an idea of the form, the form of the shape of the thing that we are looking at. So we can recognize that these are dancers. And I've always been a big fan of this kind of dragging the shutter sort of motion within the photography world. It, uh, I know it kind of fell out of favor for a while, and but this is kind of what I, I grew up with. When, when you looked at sort of more, going beyond basic techniques, people started talking about shutter speeds and, and shutter drag and, and, and what have you. And so this kind of reminds me of, of, of my childhood somewhat. And, and again, we've got the birds over here who are you know, this lovely kind of almost sort of impressionist sort of feel. And, and this, this young lady in the light, the light in this is, is absolutely gorgeous even though you know you can't actually see the light too much. The, the, the shapes and, and what this creates, I love this. I love it because just like with the other two photographers, Sugimoto and, and McCaw, that the results are not known until you see the image. I think that's, that's, that's something that I really like, would like to connect with again in photography is the, the, the element of the unknown. And you never really know what you're gonna get with these kind of these shorter or the longer shutter speeds. This is something that everybody can try, that you know, no matter if you are a, a landscape photographer or a people photographer or a street photographer, this kind of experimentation with shutter speeds, of, of creating movement, of creating flow and feeling, doesn't matter if it's sharp, doesn't matter if it's in focus, is so much more fun, certainly as, I, as far as I'm concerned, than just trying to get pin sharp tonally rich images which seem to sort of lean more into the art the, the scientific side of things where these kind sort of tend to feel they are more artistic in in intent the color work in this photography is absolutely gorgeous now you may have guessed from looking at my table here that the room in which i photograph is got a bit of a mid-century sort of modern sort of feel to it and and these prints would go absolutely wonderfully on the wall here so if you have some how eastman prints then uh, please let me know, because I would be interested in, in, in having a chat with you. These three books are very different. They are, you know, they're, they're physically, they are, they're quite different. And I, I, if I had three hands, I would hold up the, the Sugamoto as well. So, you know, they are all just monographs at the end of the day. They don't have anything special. The, the papers are not made out of gold or, or anything like that. It's purely about the photography. And I think if, if you're looking at these photographs that, you may have looked at some of them and gone, well, I like this idea and I don't particularly like that idea and that, that idea feels a bit, mm, what have you. And kind of gone, I don't, wouldn't pay 1,600 pounds for, for any of these books. And, and quite frankly, um, neither would I. I. I didn't buy any of these books when they were expensive. I bought them when they were what a normal monograph would be like. And this is what I'd like you to, to do is if you are sitting that you've been t buying monographs for many years, make sure that you actually know realistically, not necessarily how much actually they're worth, but for insurance purposes, you may find that your monograph 
collection is worth a lot of money. So take the time, go through them, just see what you are sitting on. You never know, you might be sitting on some huge, hugely valuable books. All of these books I paid less than a hundred pounds for. In fact, most of them I paid considerably less for that. You know, I think the most expensive one that I bought was the Hiroshi Sugimoto book, which I managed to get from somebody actually on, on eBay, just who was, I think, in some dire straits and was having to get rid of some of their, their monographs, unfortunately, and I was the, the beneficiary of that. But the other two I bought normally, as, as you would, just, you know, online. This one was second hand, this one was new. And between them, I think maybe it cost me £30 for the two of these. Now, the burning question, of course, is which one? Which one is worth the £1,600? Is it... He says grunting, picking it up. Is it the Hiroshi Sugimoto with his Japanese art photographer credentials? Or is it, oof, you know, Chris McCaw with his unique take on long exposures? And in, this, in a fairly, has to be said, a fairly slim volume of work. Or is it Blast from the Past? Hal Eastman, the photographer that you've probably never heard of, who maybe, maybe, the, the black sheep, right, where he is just coming out of nowhere and is worth a lot. Well, of course, the answer is actually that it is, bum, 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 it's Chris McCall. So this book here is, according to Amazon, the last time I checked, an A books worth in the region about £1,600. Whether or not it is, is entirely in your hands. Let me know in the comments. Do you think monographs have become ridiculously overpriced or... Do you think there's actually value in a monograph as a, as a collector item? All of these three photographers have been working heavily with light and, and bending it to their will. And that's a fundamental thing in photography. If you're interested in more about learning how to shape and use light, then check out this video over here.